thinking a lot about love and assumed love. Erica McWilliams, usefully ignorant. Um, is there a like? useful as helpful, um, perhaps usefully preoccupied. Um, if the empowerment comes from knowing you can do it, then that leaving aloneness is huge. And if you feel like you love someone, that's, that leaving aloneness is one of the hardest things to do, so swimming in something yourself that you're so deeply embedded, deep practice in it is one of the best ways to keep your nose and your managerial bent, your enablingness out of the way of something breathtaking. It helps you because otherwise you have the potential of lots of things, but two extremes, one being so worried that you do want to enable everything, two like a dogmatic drill sergeant sort of, I guess. What I can't figure out is why so many are saying self-directedness with a caveat. They have this dangling thing, self-directedness after. It's like you have to get this worthiness. And again, I think it's out of this assumed love. I think we think they can't be done without it, so we don't want them to be lacking. And then we feel productive or not. But I think that's the thing that's in the way, is assuming assuming that there's a basic needs to be accomplished before people can be creative, curious, falling in love with the questions. So in our love, and in our seeking to help, we end up being the most in the way. So usefully preoccupied. 24-7, there, but not there. We knock the room where everyone's on a device. That together aloneness, that alone togetherness, I think it's pretty spot on to know that people at your beck and call, but not monitoring you and not in your face. It's a space of permission with nothing to prove, with the resources right there that you need. Individually together. Usefully 
preoccupied. I think will help us cure this. <laughs>